Hello teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema! Dahil welcome ang lahat dito. Para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS, at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aaral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Hi learners, Eat to Light Tuesday is Choose English Day. I am Tutor Jamie and I will be guiding and sharing insights on creative nonfiction. Let us now turn the wheels of our creative minds as we gear up our imagination in telling our stories by writing pieces in our most creative way. Uh, last week, we have covered some of uh, the different types and forms of creative nonfiction. It was some sort of a review. No? And uh, for this afternoon session, oh, by the way, the last uh, uh, types and forms that we had last time were, were biography, reflection essay, true narratives, blogs, and travelogue. For this uh, afternoon session, naman, we are going to review literary elements, approaches, critics, and I hope you still remember them. But before that, let's pick up from where we left off last week. Kasi naiwan natin one more... Um, one more uh, creative nonfiction type and form, which is testimonio. By the way, I would like to uh, uh, greet and uh, have a shout out to all the admin and faculty members of my dear Kaloocan City Business High School. And I would like to make a shout out as well. And good afternoon to our Super CPAG o IC Principal, Dr. Ivy Perez. And of course, to our SDO Kaloocan, headed by our brilliant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Nerisa L. Dosaria Sesusik. Hello po sa inyo, ma'am. Uh, and also, a shout out to our participants, to our students, uh, co-teachers, 
Carl Henry Damaso watching from the Philippine International English School, Kuwait. Hello po, international na ang itulay. Uh, also, hello po watching from Libang Elementary School, Makato, Aklan District of Makato, Abdulia, Castillo, Talunay. Ayan. Nawala po yung signal ng video. Ayan. Mukhang uh, online naman na po tayo. There. So, we now go back to uh, testimonio. So, testimonio is actually a kind of writing which comes from uh, Latin America. This originated from Latin America dealing with the experiences of human rights abuse. No, So, this is very um, particular with the Latin America. Shout out to Kate Emery. Uh, shout out daw po. Hello. Hello, ate. Ayan. So, let us see some examples of testimonio. So here's an excerpt from my story, uh, my story of family separation, migration, and resistance by Rhea uh, Gamana. So I'll uh, let me read it to you. Canadians need to be aware that we are part of this system, not only here in uh, Canada through our immigration policies, but also in the Philippines where Canadian imperialism contributes to forced immigration. Part of our taxes goes to fund Canadian companies in the Philippines and Canadian military training of the Philippine Armed Forces to help protect those companies and forcefully displace Filipinos from the countryside through marginalization. I want a Philippines with true democracy and true independence. I want justice for the marginalized and in the underrepresented. Ayan. So if we look at the testimonio, it's uh, uh, from the word testimony. No, It really uh, needs a lot of uh, credibility and accountability kasi medyo mabigat ang testimonio. As I mentioned in the definition, it's more, uh, its topic centers on mostly uh, abuses, no? mga, mga uh, violation ng rights, and others there. So when we work on testimony, I haven't seen a lot of testimony uh, here, no? sa, originally in the Philippines, but I feel that this one is, of course, written by a Filipina. Uh, one who migrates, who migrated in Canada, I think. Uh, good afternoon, Ma'am Jamie, watching from SDOQ. Say hello, Ma'am Sharon Bausa, my classmate in my uh, in uh, uh, MAT English in Metro Manila College in QC. Hello po. Thank you for joining me today. Ayan. So that's uh, one of our uh, type, uh, types and forms of creative nonfiction, which we... Um, left off last time na naiwan natin to kasi wala nang oras. Okay, so we move on to our review for today. So we are going to review on literary elements, approaches, used in literary analysis and critique. No? So uh, I hope you still remember that. So ang gagawin lang natin ngayon is more of uh, answering some questions. No, I hope you uh, participate. So you, your answers po, you can just comment it uh, on the comment section. And then we'll do some um, discussion, a little bit of a review discussion of uh, what we had tackled about these uh, topics. No, And then please feel free to send in your questions if you have so that we can clarify. And also please feel free to... Um, uh, join in the conversation. If you feel that you have other ideas apart from what I will be sharing, please do. Uh, uh, I will read your uh, your messages no, as fast as I can kasi minsan mabilis yung pasok ng uh, messages. Ayan. So there. So first, we are going to identify the literary elements. So parang magsasagutan tayo dito ng questions and then we will do a little bit of uh, a recap of the topic. Uh, Melanie Fernandez Villalba, hello everyone watching from Kalashau, Comprehensive National High School, SDO1, Pangasinan. Hello po ma'am Villalba. There. So we are going to identify the literary elements that you will see or that uh, will be defined in each of the statements. So please comment your answers. It will really be appreciated. Ayan. So the first one is 
baka mapindot ko bigla. Ayan. It refers to the time, place, and status or condition in which a story takes place. So, what do you think is the answer? Wala akong, ano, wala akong, um, I, I did not use multiple choice. Ayan. Para we could, uh, we could uh, try to really dig into our memories and try to, uh, to give uh, what our, uh, what we recall. Ayan. So, hello, Mark Acosta, Princess Ella de Gala. Their answers are setting. Okay. So, let's see if it's a setting, no? Ma Melanie Fernandez Villalba said setting as well. Carl Henry Damaso said setting. Thank you. So let's see if it's setting. And yes, it is setting. Ayan. So much is talked about. So parang ano ba yan? Parang pang elementary naman yung question ni ma'am. So actually, I always tell my students na, of course, we all know what uh, these uh, literary elements since elementary pa. But if you if you look at it, as soon as mag-level up tayo, may parang may dumadagdag. Before, we only know setting as something that tells the location in the time when the story took place. But as we move up, no, up to uh, junior high school and senior high school, we observe that setting is not just about the location and the time. It also talks about, it also includes the condition or the status in um, in the story. And we can do that in creative nonfiction. We can actually play around words and uh, give the status or the condition. Maybe it's a stormy night or there's a thunderstorm, no? Or uh, it was the time wherein there is there are a lot of uh, discrimination happening. No? So those, those words, those descriptions can really help uh, set up your setting for your story. This is actually very common. Siyempre, common na to, nag to sa fiction. However, we can also use this, that's, that uh, strategy in uh, non-fiction, in creative non-fiction. Okay? So, we have, to, uh, we have to take our readers or our audience to the same time, same place, and same condition that we have uh, experience nung nakuha natin yung story or we when we experience the the event ayan so setting is more than just time and place it also talks about status and condition next it is the main character of story of a story novel or a play and super dali niyan no hello ronel or uh hornacion and thank you for um, participating and thank you for joining me this afternoon. So what could be the literary element that is the main character that, talk, that refers to the main character of the story, novel, or a play? Ayan. Ano po kaya yan? Some answers. Queen Fiona Marie said protagonist. Princess Ella de Gala said protagonist as well. Ayan, nagumpisa na protagonist. Mark Acosta. Carl Henry Damanso said protagonist. Let's see if it's protagonist. Ay, gumala. Ayan, protagonist nga. No? Um, uh, characters can actually build. We can do... Uh, uh, a characterization of uh, either protagonist or the antagonist or any other minor or major character by uh, putting in details to their uh, attitude, to their physical uh, physical appearance. No, uh, also we can uh, determine um, their their character by means of putting them into. Um, a situation wherein they will be in conflict with another character or how they get along with other characters in the story. Okay? So, um, napakadaling um, malaman kung sino yung ating protagonist. And of course, um, although, uh, since we are doing creative nonfiction, most of the time, the protagonist or the main character in our story would be our uh, ourselves. 
no or someone we uh someone's uh, true story we are telling there next we have a person who tells the story who is that person who tells the story in in a narrative Ayan. So, hello po muli sa lahat ng mga nag-participate uh, to my um, previews, my uh, my co-teachers, my uh, colleagues in uh, Our Lord's Angel School in Bagumbong, Caloocan. Hello po sa inyo. Ayan. Carl Henry Damaso said character. Queen Fiona Marie Villanueva said narrator. Melanie Fernandez mentioned narrator as well. Mark Acosta said narrator. Let's see if it's narrator. So a person who tells or an, an entity or someone who tells the story from uh, his or her point of view. And yes, it's a narrator. So it, uh, the narrator may also, in creative nonfiction, the, cre the narrator may also be the person who owns that real life story. So if especially if you're uh, if you are doing an autobiography so the narrator would be yourself. If you're doing a biography the narrator would be you but you are telling another person's life. No? And um if this is like a a, a reflective essay uh, a true narrative so most probably you are telling the story. So you could be you would be the narrator. Ayan. Okay? Sabi sa inyo, madadali lang yung mga review quizzes natin today. Next, the logical sequence of events that develops a story. What is that logical sequence of events that develops a story? Reginald Nunez Apas asked, can it be the storyteller po? Yes. You, if you are uh, referring to the narrator, yes. It... Uh, but we can actually call them storyteller. However, it's more commonly def uh, uh, termed as narrator. Yon. Okay. Thank you for your question, Mr. Reginald Nunez Apas. Ayan. Carl Henry Damasa said place. Mam Ma Villalba said plot. Princess Ella de Gala said plot. Acosta said plot. Miss Villanueva said plot. Is it plot? It is plot. Yeah. So, uh, remember our remember uh, that the story has to be has to have sequence, has to have an event, or the the events that happened in the story has to be logically arranged. Well, it depends on the person or the writer how he would want his his or her story to be uh, told. Pero whatever, however that is, it's called a plot. So. We always have, hello, Mr. Rance Marion A. Nawe from Our Lord's Angel School. And, um, in plot, uh, we, all, we always have that, di ba, laging tinatanong ng mga teachers natin, what are the parts of the plot or what makes up a plot? So we have beginning, we have the rising action, we have the conflict, the climax, and then the falling action, and then the resolution or the ending of the story. It doesn't, uh, it, it, it doesn't change, no. Yung yung uh, yung plot na yan, it doesn't change. Although uh, some writers would do a flashback, but that that's another uh, topic. Ayan. Okay. Next. Here we have what is that manner in which a narrative is presented, comprising plot and setting. And medyo medyo kakaiba yung uh, yung description na to. What is that manner in which a narrative is presented comprising plot and setting? Parang ikaw yung lahat na nagsasabi no plot and then yung setting. Okay? Sige, bigay ko na yung answer kasi uh, this is something new. Okay? The answer is in the narrative method. And key uh, keywords there would be narrative. The manner in which a narrative is presented comprising the plot and the setting. 
Okay, this is the me uh, the method used would be narrative. Kasi if it would be like explaining something, then that would be like argumentative or persuasive. But this one, narrative, so kinukwento lang. So the method or the manner, it is uh, the manner used no, to tell the, uh, to show the plot or to tell the plot and to uh, give the setting would be in a narrative method. Next. Here, it is the character in conflict with the protagonist. Ayan, super dali. Who is that or what do we call that character in a story that is always in conflict with the protagonist? Queen Fiona Marie Villanueva said antagonist. Reginald Nunez Apa said antagonist. Is it antagonist? Meron pa ba? Kung may pro... Of course, merong antagonist, di ba? There. So, um, let me just share. Uh, I find it really amusing how uh, filmmakers at the uh, at this time are uh, this in this time of ours. No, filmmakers, writers, authors would actually give a different flavor, a different view on antagonist. No. Like, unang-una ko nakita yan with uh, Maleficent, di ba? And uh, during our time, nung mga kinder pa kami, we even have there uh, in one Luna Elementary School in uh, Sampaloc, Manila, where I finished until grade 4, mer yung aming room doon would be painted with murals about uh, Sleeping Beauty. So I grew up looking at the, uh, at the dragon and uh, really fearing Maleficent. But then, now, it's amazing that they were able to give a different view or different point of view of Maleficent. So from antagonist, she became now the protagonist. And it's actually an explanation of why uh, Maleficent acts that way. No? Um, it's actually nice to, ano, not really that I'm ano, parang pro antagonist of course no uh, ano naman yun ibang usapan yun but then uh, i really admire those people who are able to give a different point of view or a different twist with their antagonist another is uh, ano pa ba yung alam niyo na recently na uh, na punta sa limelight or na punta sa good side yung antagonist diba yung uh, what's that uh, cruella have you seen that movie diba yung cruella uh, before we all in a Disney film, we knew we know that Cruella is someone who is obsessed with first with the fur of uh, of uh, dogs and any mammals. No, so he script and then she would uh, make a uh, a coat out of that. No, but then Cruella right now, if you haven't seen it yet, I would not preempt or I would not spoil you. No, I will not give any spoiler. Uh, it really gave a different point of view, a different uh, twist on who Cruella the Vil is. Yeah, so there. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Maganda siya. Okay, next. It is an issue in a narrative around which the whole story revolves. So what is that? This is actually talking about a part of a plot. It is an issue in a narrative around which the whole story revolves. So, kumbaga, if you imagine the plot na pa, pa slope siya pataas, para siyang mountain, angat siya, beginning, in the beginning, a part of the plot, you would learn about the setting and the, uh, the, the characters. You would be introduced to the setting and the characters. But as you go up the slope of uh, the, the plot of the story, you would learn... Uh, you would learn this, this would happen, no? And then the whole story would actually seem that it uh, started with that part of the plot. Reginald Nunez Apa said conflict. Henry, Carl Henry Damaso said conflict, no? Is it conflict? Yes, it's conflict. It's definitely conflict. If you observe conflict, di ba pag beginning, parang mellow pa, calm pa lahat, uh, Kalma, kalmado pa lahat ng characters, no? They are, expla they are explaining uh, the characterization of the people in the story and then the the setting. So lahat yun, 
uh, put together in uh, in in uh, the beginning of the story and then rises to a uh, to a right to the rising action and then yun na yung conflict and of course we have four types of conflict well sometimes we have five so man versus man man versus uh, society man versus versus self man versus uh, nature and uh, i read one resource saying there is also man versus god or supreme being yon so conflict would be uh, an issue in a narrative around which the whole story evolves parang if there is no conflict parang or problem parang the the story is not as catchy as interesting as it is or it should be next would be a general atmosphere of a narrative what is that general atmosphere of a narrative? Actually, it starts with an M. Mm -mm. No, a general atmosphere of a narrative. So I'll give the answer. Hintay ng kuryo yung answer nyo. The answer is mood. Yan. Now, I came across a question. And what's the difference between tone and mood? When we say tone. Uh, when we say mood, is that the general atmosphere of a narrative, or it's the it's the it's the um, the parang yung yung atmosphere that the narrative uh, that the narrative or the story gives. Parang sa part yan nung nagbabasa or nung nanonood yung mood, no? So part yan ng story or sa part yan nung, nung uh, nagbabasa or nung nanonood yung mood na yan parang kung ano yung feel nung story after niya mabasa or after niya mapanood so yun yung mood, yun yung lumalabas yun namang uh, yun namang yun namang tone uh, that comes from the part of the author no part of the author naman yun um, pag uh, Kung ang, if the author wants to show that the story is uh, is if the author wants to show that the story is um, uh, parang sad or happy or nakakatakot yun yung siniset ng author yung tone okay there next po is it is the central idea or concept of a story. What is that po central idea or concept of a story? The central idea it actually starts with letter T. So let's let me give out the answer. The answer is theme there. So central idea or concept of a, of a story. Most of the time, uh, most of the time po, ang um, theme is uh, just one word lang, like love, family, uh, betrayal, what else? Um, life, no? Um, uh, profession, those are theme. It can also be a phrase, like loving loving a family or uh, losing someone no? so those are themes it's the overall idea of the story that you are writing or that you are making there so yun po yung uh, yung theme yeah next so dito naman tayo sa literary technique or device used no so what literary technique or device is used? So you'll be reading like statements and then let's try to see what literary technique or device is used. So what are those literary or technique or devices? We can uh, recall it as the, yung ating mga, mga figures of speech. No? Yung mga na, na, uh, na recall or na topic natin dito sa itulay. So we have... The room was dark and gloomy. So what would be the uh, the literary technique or the literary device that is shown or that is used in this statement? The room was dark and gloomy. So ano kaya? Yan. 
Yeah. So let me give out the answer. Ah, ayo gumalaw. Yeah. Imagery or imagery that is visual. Yeah. So why imagery? Because, di ba? Imagery is a device or a technique that we that authors use or that we use in order to show, ah, uh, parang give picture to the minds of the readers. No, so we we give descriptions that show image. Here is is an imagery that uses visual, because dark and gloomy. So nakikita man man yun. It's not really felt there. Ayan. Hello, Ma'am Jamie Lynn Manalili and all the viewers of Itulay. Hello, Ma'am Angie Solano Noscal. Yan, another classmate ko po sa mass sa MAT English in Metro Manila College. Hello, Ma'am. Next, we have this one. The river was roaring in the mountains. The river was roaring in the mountains. What is the literary device used here? Hello po kay Ducati Lamborghini. Napakamahal naman ng pangalan mo ng ating participant. Queen Fiona Marie said personification. Reginald Nunez Apa said personification. Princess Ella de Gala said personification. Let's see if it's personification. Yes, it's personification. Okay, why personification? Of course, because we are giving um, a a a person's uh, characteristic to something that is not that is inanimate or that is not uh, alive no so we are giving characteristics so the characteristic here or something that that uh, that inanimate object does na hindi naman talaga so roaring would be although hindi naman talaga nagro-roar ang tao but it's a sound that is made by something na uh mo, syempre, alive no there Um, there is another uh, consideration or another literary device wherein we can categorize this statement, and that would also be imagery, imagery na auditory, no, uh, na hearing. Because river was roaring in the mountain, so if you say that, it feels like uh, ang pumapasok sa isip ng uh, ng uh, reader would be he can he he or she can hear the river roaring in the mountains yeah next is this one she sells she's eto na she sells seashells by the seashore what type of literary device would this be this would be alliteration and alliteration is uh, is like is a sound device no a sound device this is normally used in poems but it can also be used in narration especially if you want to put in an effect of uh initials no here the initials that are used uh, that, that can be heard would be the letter s no so she not really the s but the sh sound no nabubulol na nga tayo most tongue twisters would have alliteration ayan so tama yung mga sagot nila miss villanueva and mr damaso next we have there this naman would be some kind of a uh, situation or some kind of a uh, critic so let's find out what device is normally used in this part or in this critic in this part of uh statement the animal farm depicts orwell's observation of overthrowing one tyran one one tyranny and ending with another only in a different form the animal farm is actually a novel or a story uh written by orwell and um this is about you mga if you have read or if you have watched its animation on youtube or have read it somewhere um it's actually um Anong tawag niyan? Uh, the story of uh, in an animal farm, abusive yung owner, and then the animals, no, the pigs, the cows, the horses, everyone, uh, all the animals go together and then they uh, try to overthrow their uh, their owner. Literally overthrow, penalize talaga. And then they try to uh, manage the farm themselves. But then, of course, just like uh, uh, in uh, the world of uh, of people, 
uh, some people would try to get the power of those who are in um, in uh, the position no? by overthrowing. So sabi niyo po, allusion, metaphor, metaphor. It's actually an allegory. No? So if we remember, allegory is like depicting or uh, using a statement or uh, a technique that is used by putting um, symbolism to work and to give uh, to hide issues that are happening in a society or in an event. So he denied me or well dun sa mga animals in the animal farm the issue with uh, taking over uh, tyranny and then uh, ending it, but then put uh, transferring to another tyranny. Ayon. Okay. Next, we have there. It's so nice of you to come in late and not be ready for the presentation today. This is actually irony and it's verbal or verbal irony. No, So it's sometimes, sometimes lang, ha, it uh, actually is referred to also sarcasm, especially if the if the speaker intends it to be. Yeah. Next po is this. The new normal, this new normal is currently the Noah's Ark of the Philippine education system. So what type of device is used here? Dito dapat yung sagot ni Sir Reginald Nunez Apas kanina. There, allusion. It is allusion. No? So remember that allusion is like alluding something or a, um, a piece of a, or a character from one literary piece to another. So instead, Noah's Ark actually means a big problem or a big task. No, so if we put, uh, if we, uh, if we put there, the new normal is is currently the big task of the Philippine education system. It would putting a, a different flavor for it would uh, on it would be using allusion. Noah's Ark. Okay, there. Next, we have this one. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, oh, yung mga Harry Potter fans chat, Harry was personally trained by Professor Lupin in conjuring a Patronus, which he used in battling the mentors, not only in this part, but in all succeeding Harry Potter movie franchises. So, ano po device or technique is used by uh, J.K. Rowling, the author of uh, Harry Potter series? With this uh, event or this uh, uh, ev yeah event in Harry Potter, the Prisoner of Azkaban, it's actually foreshadowing. Ayan. Diba? If you find if, if you are uh, if you have watched all the franchises, the movie franchises of uh, Harry Potter from the first up to the last no uh, movie, you find that everything that they teach or they learn in uh, Hogwarts in their school is actually event and uh, mabilis lang that they apply agad uh, in battling um, evil in their world, in the wizarding world. So foreshadowing yun. Na when we say foreshadowing, it's like uh, we are sure that something will happen with uh, referring to the hints that are given in the earlier parts of the story. Yeah, eh, uh, Professor Lupin taught Harry Potter to do Patronus, no, yung kanyang uh, expecto patronum, di ba? So, tapos, eventually, ginamit niya in saving his and uh, his godfather's life. Next, we have here, this one. We go uh, classic naman. In Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, Romeo went to the Capulet party just to see his then crush Rosaline but then he instantly fell in love with Juliet yeah so what is the device or the technique used here so are you surprised that hindi naman talaga si Juliet yung talagang pinuntahan ni Romeo during that party in the the onset of the play but actually a girl named Rosaline Rosaline is a fictional character in Romeo and Juliet uh, who plays the niece of the niece of the Lord Capulet? Pinsan siya ni Juliet, and siya talaga yung crush ni Romeo. But then when uh, when he saw Juliet, 
na fell na fall in love siya kay Juliet. So what uh, literary device is that? It's actually irony. Yan, situational and dramatic. Why situational? Situational because if you look at the the conditions of the situation, um the character is actually looking forward to seeing his crush. No, I iba talaga yung kanyang uh, kanyang sadya. But then drama tapos biglang iba rin yung nag-turn out. That's irony. And then dramatic naman because we the readers or the viewers know um know uh what is happening in Romeo and Juliet. So it's dramatic. Next we have here, konti na lang. O, tinanaman ako. Name the literary approach used. So, comment your answers as well. The poem Still I Rise by Maya Angelou mirrors her experiences of being abused and discriminated due to her color. So, what is the literary approach used? This is act. So, tanda na alala natin yung literary approach natin: biographical, historic, historical or historicism, formalism, uh, feminism, Marxism, di ba? So, what is that? Kaya this is actually biographical because the poem does not just is not just written by Maya Angelou. Just uh, uh, it, it's actually a result of her experiences because he she has uh, a difficult uh childhood ayan so uh, i'll cut my my our review here but if you want you can actually see this material on uh, deped commons this is all these are all uh, uploaded there so let me uh cut this short and then we'll go to this one there. The best investment you can make is in yourself. The more you learn, the more you earn. This is by uh, Warren uh, Buffet, Edward Buffet, which uh, who is uh, an American business magnet uh, investor and philanthropist. And with that, uh, this is actually our last lecture for the school year. No, uh, it has been a pleasure and honor to be your e to light tutor for creative writing and creative nonfiction for this school year. Again, I am Tutor JB signing off. Stay safe. God bless. Sulong edukalidad. Thank you po sa lahat na nag-participate. Uh, Thank you, uh, Kaloocan City Business High School. Thank you, Ms. Degala. Thank you, Ma'am Nascal. Thank you, Sir Reginald. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ronel. Parang gusto pa ako magstay ng matagal sa ano ito like is this a sign
Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!